guys, and welcome to This Is Now. Google Chrome absolutely dominates the internet today. With over 70% market share on the PC, and a version of Chrome available on everything from Android to Mac to iOS, it's not hard to see why. Now back in 2008, the internet was a very, very different place. It was ruled by Internet Explorer, or more specifically, Internet Explorer 6. In the early 2000s, IE6 had a ridiculous 95% market share. Like, it's hard to even sort of fathom that today. When the internet first came out, a sentence which I don't think I've said ever before, it was mainly reserved for researchers or agencies, not so much for the general public. Web pages were just text-based, and if you were lucky, you might have a picture, which sounds like the internet back in that day. However, the first web browser, Mosaic, looked way more like something like Microsoft Word than any kind of browser that you would recognize today. When Netscape Navigator was released in 1995, it was the first browser to include a proper graphical interface that was much more accessible for the average person. Now at the time, IE didn't even exist yet. In fact, Microsoft didn't think that internet access was something that people would want. However, they were proven wrong, as Netscape became massively popular, and that really forced Microsoft to introduce Internet Explorer. Ultimately, IE beat out Netscape for one simple reason. People had to buy Netscape, which cost somewhere between $50 and $90, whereas Internet Explorer was built into Windows 95. You would think it's insane today to ever purchase a browser, but back in the day, Internet Explorer being not only free, but also included with your Windows 95 install was a huge, huge deal. AOL bought Netscape, which is just a very 90 sentence, but ultimately it was shut down in 2008. Although, fun fact, Netscape did become the bedrock for Mozilla Firefox, a pretty well-known browser today. So things were great for Microsoft, right? Why exactly did Internet Explorer fail, and where does Chrome come in on all of this? Well, the problem with Internet Explorer 6 wasn't that it was a terrible browser. After all, it did come out all the way back in 2001 for everything from Windows 98 to XP. The issue was that Microsoft aggressively pushed everyone out of the market and then proceeded to, well, not really do anything for about five years. When you have virtually no competition in the market, there is very little incentive to innovate or improve a product. But here's the thing, even if they wanted to, Microsoft was limited into what they could actually even improve on in the first place. Because they were the de facto industry standard, practically every piece of web-based software had to be compatible with Internet Explorer, specifically six. Huge companies and organizations built their entire IT infrastructure around Windows XP and Internet Explorer 6. We're talking banks, hospitals, government agencies, hundreds of thousands of PCs that all needed to be compatible with Internet Explorer 6. In China and South Korea, for example, a lot of banks built their entire online banking architecture on the ActiveX framework, something that is not natively active in Chrome, and that's because while ActiveX was great in 1996, it is super, super insecure now, which is why a lot of browsers have dropped support for it. Instead of these banks and these companies spending billions of dollars to rewrite the software for the newer browsers, they decided to just build off the original code, which means that they have limited support in a lot of current browsers today. All of these problems piled up quickly. Internet Explorer was slow, it didn't support newer web standards, which meant that lots of sites were coded only to really work on Internet Explorer, and it was massively, massively insecure. Enter Google Chrome. Now, when it first came out, it was a real revolution. Sure, Mozilla's Firefox was sort of the first big step forward, but it really was Chrome that made everyone sit up and realize that it was time to start investing in making the internet a better place. Fun fact, I remember testing Chrome 2 all the way back in June 2009. Yeah, that's a video that's still online. Hey guys, what is up? It's Duncan. I remember hating Chrome. You didn't like Chrome at the beginning? No. I used it pretty much as like as soon as it came out, like it was such a big jump forward. I mean, think about it, right? Like there was like tabbed browsing, which had kind of existed, but it really was uh, sort of the first time that tabs had been put on the top. And there's other things like you didn't have to really deal with like all the separate windows that especially Internet Explorer had. I mean, who wants to deal with a different window for every web tab you have open? That's the thing, me. Matt over here, he's so old that he still thinks tabs were a bad idea. Google also stepped up security in a big way by building in a sandbox which kept each tab from accessing any more data than it needed, and importantly, it made everything far, far more stable. Because essentially, back in the older days, if a single tab went down, your entire browser would be crashing. However, with Chrome, that tab might crash, but the rest of the browser would still stay up. I know all of this sounds so old school, but this was legitimately so, so cool. Chrome even has a built-in ad blocker, but I use the words ad blocker pretty lightly. Now, yes, Chrome does block the most egregious ads on the internet, but after all, Google does make about, how much money does Google make? June of 2019 reported $38.9 billion in revenue. 
So that's a lot of money. They don't want to not make that much money. I mean, that's, that's how much this is makes. As a Google product, Chrome really wants you to use Google services and of course use those sweet, sweet Google ads. Now to give them some credit, they do allow proper ad blockers on the browser, but by default, what's the search engine? Oh yeah, it's Google. Chrome also sends the URLs of the sites you visit to Google. It ever so helpfully logs you into Google sites. It allows you to pay for things easily with your credit card saved in Google Wallet. I mean, the list goes on and on. Now, honestly, this is all okay. Not only can you turn off basically all these things, but at the end of the day, it's a free browser and privacy is very much something that you might feel okay making some trade-offs for. The issue though, is that there are other options out there which are actually really, really good. Today, the dark ages of Internet Explorer are over and there are lots of solid options. Opera has migrated to a Chrome base, but it still has lots of useful features. Firefox has been majorly overhauled and Safari offers some of the best anti-tracking protection period. What's most exciting to me though, I can't believe I'm about to say this, is Microsoft Edge. What? Yes, not Internet Explorer, even though everyone thinks that the icon's exactly the same, Edge. Now hear me out, seriously, the new version of Edge is now based on Chromium, which is of course the open source version of Chrome. So it's a little bit more lightweight than full Chrome, and it does support way more systems than the current version of Edge does, including going all the way back to Windows 7, and you can even get now Chrome as well as Edge for Mac and iOS. In fact, Chrome was already on those, but now Edge is also on Mac, which is interesting because, fun fact, another fun fact, did you know that Internet Explorer used to be the default web browser on Mac OS? Yes, I did know that. Okay, well, it's not such a fun fact anyway. With support for extensions, dark mode, and the obvious integration with Microsoft and Windows accounts and features, I mean, honestly, the biggest upside here is the lack of Google pickiness. Over on the main channel, I did a video discussing why Apple is actually right about privacy. Now you should definitely go check it out for the full explanation, but essentially it boils down to this. Are you the customer or are you the product? With companies like Apple and even Microsoft, you're pretty clearly the customer. Microsoft makes the vast majority of their money selling licenses for Windows and Office, which gives them a better incentive to protect your privacy. Now while Google does a better job than say, Facebook, Personally, I feel better relying on Microsoft and Apple for my data, where the incentives for keeping my privacy intact are much, much clearer. In fact, I actually recently switched over to the beta of Edge, which I really don't have any complaints about. It works exactly as well as Chrome for everything I need it for, and the upcoming inclusion of a privacy dashboard to allow you to customize just how hardcore your tracking protection is, for example, is really awesome. Not to mention that all those companies that were still relying on Internet Explorer 6 can now use Edge because it will have a compatibility mode built in. You'll literally be able to open up like Internet Explorer tabs inside of Edge, which is great for South Korean banks, which I use many of. Are you going to ask me about my South Korean banking habits, Matt? I feel like the less I know, the better in this scenario. Good answer. Look, I love Google and use their stuff all the time, but it makes me uncomfortable that the world largely relies on the same browser made by one of the world's largest ad companies. It's like that thing, like, uh, what's the phrase? Like, uh, you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, or, wait, no, actually, is that it? Matt, villain expert, help me. Why am I a villain expert? Because you do lots of weird research on villains, it's fine. What? Whether you want to consider Edge, Firefox, or any number of offshoots of Chrome is up to you, but for me, I think it's actually time to escape Chrome, or at least to try to. Thank you so much for watching. You can check out some of our other super rad awesome videos here. Why is it super rad awesome? I don't even know why you made me say that. And make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell because if you don't, we'll make Matt switch to Internet Explorer. Six to be specific. At least I'll be compatible.